Hey everybody, welcome back to WebInspect, the show for creative web developers. I am Timothy Miller, your host. Today we are talking about backup, specifically how to backup your websites using cron jobs. Backing up your work is one of the most important things you can do as a programmer or even anyone who works in tech. Backups will not only give you peace of mind, but they will also save your hard-earned work time and time again and earn a lifetime of gratitude from whoever's websites you're managing. Not only are backups extremely important on your own local computer, but they're also extremely important on your websites. So important, in fact, that most websites should not go live without some sort of backup strategy. That may sound like a perfect world example for um, a lot of little websites that you might create, but I can show you how to backup websites in such a quick and easy way that it really makes no sense not to back up all of your websites. Really, after you've done this a couple times, it should only take you maybe a half an hour to set up backups for each new website that you create. So how do we do this? We do it through the power of cron jobs. Let's jump in and I'll show you what I mean. A cron job is a Linux command which is used to permanently schedule a task for your server to perform. This task can be as simple as a single command or it can be a whole library of scripts. Really, anything you can do with the command line, you can do with the cron job. You guys know I'm a Media Temple guy, so I am going to be showing you how to set up cron jobs using Media Temple. Most similar hosting platforms have the ability to, to run cron jobs. Really, any sort of Linux server will allow you to run a cron job on it. Now, when you hear me say this is a Linux command just for the sake of clarity, this command does not run on your computer. You do not have to be running Linux yourself in order to run cron jobs. As you can see, I'm running a Mac here. It doesn't matter for the purposes of running a cron job. You just have to have a Linux server. So as long as you aren't using ASP.NET with a Windows server, you should be good to use cron jobs. Cron jobs are great for tasks that you want to set and forget, which is exactly what we want to do with a backup. We don't want to have to babysit this. We just want to set it up once and not have to think about it again, unless something goes wrong, of course. Um, then if a bad actor messes up the site, we can just pull a backup from the day before and everything will be hunky-dory again. So let's jump into this and I'll show you how to schedule your first cron job. Now the first thing you want to do with backups is to make sure that they're not in a publicly accessible folder. I have a server here and I know that all my public websites are in the domains folder. This is where all of the public, all of the public code lives for my websites. So I don't want the backups to go in here. Instead, I'm going to be using this data folder. And inside the data folder, I have a backups folder. And this is where all of my backups are going to live. It's probably worth noting that this is not the ideal way to do a backup. I am saving all of my backups on the same computer as the actual websites. So if this server was corrupted or something like that, I would lose all my backups. So this does have some flaws, but this is a great place to start. And if you only have one server available, then this might be your only option, and it's certainly better than having no backups. I would probably make sure to come in here and download my backup folder once every month or every other week or um, more, more frequently depending on the importance of the site. That way you have a local backup in addition to your remote backup just for a little extra security. I'm going to show you two different types of backups here. First we'll talk about backing up files and then we will talk about backing up databases. So I'm going to create a new file. First of all I'm going to call it backupex.sh since I already have a backup file in here. I'm going to open this with my text editor of choice, which is Sublime Text. All right, here is my backup shell file. Now any shell script has to start with the type of script it will be executing. So in order to tell it we're going to write a shell script, you have to type this little command. And that just tells Linux what kind of script we're executing here. Next, for each backup, I want to give it a date just so I know exactly when that backup ran. So I'm going to store a variable called now. So this variable will now give us a date that we can use to name all of our backup files. And that date will look something like 2019.07. You know, whatever day it is. So that just gives us a good way to name our files so that we can tell exactly when each backup was created. 
Now, as I said, we're going to start with backing up our files. So we want to package up all of our website's files in a nice little package. And in order to do that, we're going to use a command called tar. And we're going to use C to create, F to give the file a name, and Z to zip it up. Now, all we have to do with this command is to tell it what, what new file it needs to create and what files it should create that file from, if that makes sense. Now, the first parameter will be the file to create.tar.gzip. It just shows what type of file it is. And then we will give this our website folder. Now, the paths in Media Temple are a little bit tricky, and every host is going to do this slightly differently. In order to find the correct path for your Media Temple host, you can actually search for it. If you search something like Media Temple File Path, then you will find the system paths and log file locations. I'm going to look for the root, like the web document root. So I think this is the path that we're actually looking for, the website document root with control panel, because my my account uses the control panel. So what we want is home slash username slash whatever folder. And I think in my case, the username is actually going to be just the number of my package. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to do slash home slash 207 261 slash um, data, this is that data folder that we put our backups into, slash backups, slash website, slash file to create. So we'll need to create this website folder, and this will be named based on whatever website we want to back up. And then the file to create will be, I'm just going to call it back underscore dollar sign now. And that just prints out our now variable. Now after that, we just give it the website that we want to back up. So I'm going to use home slash 207. And I'm just going to use one of my smaller websites, which is webinspect.tech, just for proof of concept. All right, we have our backup script. Now we just need to run this and see if it works. So I'm going to open a terminal. So here I am SSH'd into my server. I'm going to change directory into this data folder and try to execute this script. So here we can see when I list the files, the backup script does exist. So now I will do dot slash backup dash ex dot sh and it says permission denied. So this is actually a pretty important thing. Whenever you create a new file, it will not necessarily have the correct permissions. I can go back here and transmit and change the permissions here. You just need to add these execute permissions. And then we go back to the terminal, try to run this again. All right, it says no such file or directory. So that's because we didn't actually create this website directory. So let's come back to transmit, create website folder. Now we will try to back up again. And that looks like it succeeded to me. So now let's go into this folder. We might need to refresh it. And there it is. There's our backup dated appropriately we should be able to download this to our desktop, open it up, and go down several folders deep, and here's the website. All right, so so far we have taken all of the files of our website, zipped it up, dated it, and put it on another part of our server as kind of a temporary backup solution. The problem is, of course, that a lot of websites do not only have files, they also have databases. So I want to also show you guys how to back up a database real quick. So we're going to switch back to our shell file here, go down to a new line, and I'm going to show you how to back up a database. This command is a little more complex, but I will walk you through it. First of all, um, we're using a SQL database. So we're going to use MySQL dump. This command helps you to dump all of the contents of your database into a new file, which is exactly what we want for backing up a database. Now we need to give it a URL to connect to for our database. So we type dash H to tell it what we're doing. Media Temple databases are in a format like internal DB. We want to use the internal for this. And then your grid number, just like that. Next, we want to use a command called add drop table, and we need to give it our username. 
which again for me is going to be the ID of my box, so 207. And then we need a password. Don't actually use this password. It's a terrible password. Next, we need to give it the table name of whatever we want to export. For WordPress, it would have like a WP underscore table name, something like that. Then we need a less than sign to tell it to take this table and dump it into our backup file where we will also use our now variable.sql. So let me actually shrink my font size here for a second so that you can see the full line of code there. So this command is going to do exactly what I said, take a database, dump it into a backup file, date it, and that should take care of that. Because this has so much sensitive information in here, I am not going to run this for real. I'm just going to comment it out, but that is how you would back up a database if you so desire. All right, so now we have our shell script here and we've tested it, we've executed it with SSH just to make sure it works. Now what we want to do is cause this to be executed every day or every week or however often we want. And going back to the beginning of the video, we are going to do this using cron jobs. You can actually do this through the command line, I believe, but I'm not sure you can do it through the command line with media temple. I'm not sure that they have that enabled. Um, but what you can do with media temple is come to your control panel here and in the file management section, you will see cron jobs listed under here. All right, so as you can see, they say cron is a scheduling service for Unix slash Linux operating systems, and they tell you the limits that they put on cron jobs, which none of these should be a problem for our purposes. So we're going to click add cron. You can add a notification email if you prefer. It will automatically notify you if your cron job fails. So it's not essential that you do that. And this is nice. Media Temple actually gives you basically the path that we're going to need here. So we will type that in using our own uh, file name there. And then Media Temple gives you just some very simple options for um, exactly how you want to do this. You can schedule exactly what minute this cron job goes off. Um, midnight tends to work pretty well. I tend to like 2 a.m. because that usually tends to be the slow time for most of my websites. And every day is good. You can also do every weekday. You can also select weekdays in particular if you want to, but I am just going to stick with the default options. Then we will save, and there we go. We have our cron job all set to go, and this will automatically generate a backup for us every night, or every morning rather, at 2 a.m. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for backups. Like I say, this is not the most robust solution in the world, but it is a very quick and easy solution, and I have gotten a lot of mileage out of it over the years. Hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you did, hit the like button, leave me a comment down below, and let me know um, what worked, what didn't work for you. Um, I always love to hear those things. Thanks for joining me, and remember, everyone, never stop learning. Bye.